Hello friends, welcome to another weekly reading vlog. It is, yeah, it's Friday today and it's Friday when you're seeing this, just not the same Friday. I hope that you guys are having a great start to your weekends or whenever you're watching this, that it's a lovely day. I wanted to update, get this vlog going and started. I am already exhausted. It's noon. I'm just eating, I just ate my smoothie, just cooking my avocado toast, getting some breakfast so I can get on with filming and get some of my YouTube work done for the day. So far, all I've gotten accomplished, actually, it's a lot. I don't know why I say it like that, but just a, a heck ton of household chores and stuff that you don't care about that I got done this morning that feels great. So let's talk about what I've been reading the last couple of days and what I finished and made my way through. So first things first, two days ago, if you remember from last week's reading vlog when I was going dress shopping, I started listening to Transcendent Kingdom by Yagazi and I just was not invested or wowed at all. So I think that's one idea and after like 15% of the way through, I would love to, to know if you love this book, why you love it, um, to maybe convince me not to unhaul it because I just have read books with similar themes that are really well done recently. And so it's gonna have to be really, really great for me to take the time to invest in reading it. I couldn't get connected to the characters at all. Everything felt so much at a distance and I frankly just like didn't even care about learning about her or her family. Um, so yes, I'd love to know more if you love Transcendent Kingdom, but what I decided to do, because it was just super in the mood, my friends have been reading this book and I had FOMO, and besides, it's an anticipated release for the year. It's one of my most anticipated releases of the year. So I started listening to Two Nights Ago, You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by the Dear Aquakia Mezzi, and I finished it this morning. It's a very short book, just under 300 pages. I highly recommend the audiobook, which is available on Scribd if you're interested in listening to it, because I think the voice actor just adds so much to the story. This is a romance, and I generally don't go for this genre, but it is a romance that I can confidently say I loved. And it's because it involves so many other aspects to this story, the main thing being grief. And our main character, it begins with her hooking up with this guy in the bathroom. And it's the first time that she's hooked up with somebody since her husband died five years ago. And so we follow her learning to date again, learning to love again, navigating all of those choices. It also has an excellent best friend relationship between Faye and her best friend, Joy. And it just explores a lot of dynamics of love and relationships and romance in modern times, but also as somebody who's dealt with grief. So I found a lot of this quite relatable, not as somebody who's lost a spouse to death, but... Um, without getting too in-depth here, I've been married before, and so losing your spouse that way, we both had said afterwards, it would have been easier had you died. And I know like that is not meant to sound insensitive. Of course, I would never wish that upon myself or anybody, um, but I'm just saying there's a similar relatability factor of getting divorced from the person you thought you'd spend forever with and also losing somebody that you thought you'd spend forever with and choosing how to date people and love people again. I really liked the exploration of just because someone treats you well for the first time and is really nice and cares about you, it doesn't mean that they're the one for you. And I think that's a scary thing as you leave a marriage and you find somebody like that, it almost, you start going down the avenue again. Okay, is this the person I'm gonna marry? Is this the person I'm gonna be with for forever? And sometimes you just have to let that go and just date. I think this explored that really well. There was great representation and diversity in this book. The island setting was beautiful. Even the food descriptions were lovely. I don't necessarily think that like the romance was my favorite aspect of this book, but I did enjoy seeing the process of grief being worked through between the two characters in this because there are two characters who are grieving different ways. Um, so I think like friendship, romance, 
there were so many just important things discussed in this and it was a fun time. It was a laugh out loud funny. I absolutely loved the dialogue between Joy and Faye as best friends. And so I don't really want to say more than that, I suppose. is a twist I did not see coming and I don't really have an issue with it. I don't want to give it away whatsoever. I liked the way that things turned out. I liked the character growth that we got by the end. So if anyone can make me love a romance, it is a quakey and messy and stunning book, stunning cover. And I'm really happy that I read it. Perfect summary beach time read. If you need like a beach read, that's great. Quickly, since you just heard my toast get done cooking, I wanted to say I started The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. Now this is the Patreon buddy read for the month of July that my wonderful friends in Patreon voted to read. So as you know, I do spoiler reading vlogs for patrons, so I'm not gonna talk much about it here. I also do a first reactions within the first week of the month to help people decide if they want to pick it up where I go in depth about a lot of the things there. So this book is like a Middle Eastern inspired fantasy, I think. We're following Luli and she's known as the Midnight Merchant, a criminal who sells like these magical artifacts. And then we're also following the sons of the Sultan and how their lives combine. Luli has like a best friend at this point who is a Jin and they kind of have to work together to retrieve this artifact that will give whoever has control of it a lot of power. That's the briefest way I can sum this up. I love desert fantasy. I love stories involving Ifrit's engine and just anything with that mythology tends to be my favorite form of fantasy. So I am on page 122 at this point. I'm just over a quarter of the way through when I started this last freaking night. That's how unput downable it is for me. So I don't really want to say more since it's for my patrons, but I'm loving it. I can't put it down. It is fast paced. It is a page turner and I'm eating it up. I love it. Love it so far. It's not like groundbreaking, the best thing I've ever read, but if you need a pacey, plotty, page turner, fun fantasy book, this is it so far. I mean, I'm a quarter of the way through, so I'll report back later. I'm going to eat my breakfast and then film some videos for the day. You see the girls just pacing around in the background. Fairness, I've only done this twice. Are they doing terrible? No, she's doing very well.
Okay guys, this update is coming to you from my bed with my avocado. I just came home from work early because we had a 12 hour shift today. It's a Tuesday after the 4th of July and I have gotten no sleep for the past like four days. I think I've gotten like four hours a night and I think my blood sugar is low because I just like could not stay awake and I thought I was going to pass out at work. So I just came home oh, to lay here because I like was not capable of like providing healthcare for another patient. But I wanted to update you guys a little bit on what I've been reading. Sorry that this vlog is going to be very, very short just because I have not had a lot of time to vlog. And the reading I've been doing has mostly been for the Patreon Buddy Read of the Month in which I do spoiler reading vlogs for. So that is The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. And this is the Middle Eastern fantasy I've been reading, the desert-based fantasy uh, by an Arab author, I believe. And so I finished it on my lunch break today. It was a super fast paced, fun ride, page turner. I enjoyed the characters. I think some things might've been a tad bit predictable. Some things took me by surprise. It's one that it didn't end on like a huge cliffhanger, I don't think, but it was intriguing enough. I think like I had heard it was gonna end on more of a cliffhanger than it really did, but it was intriguing enough where they left off to where I was like, I wanna know what happens in the next book. So I'll definitely pick up the sequel whenever that comes out. So if you like City of Brass and you're a fan of that or like some of the young adult series that I have read, then I do definitely, definitely recommend this book. It just doesn't focus on romance, which is a great thing for a girl like me. So those are my brief thoughts. I still need to update my Patreon vlog and end that one out. The other thing that I have been listening to, and I think I'm at 45% of the way through right now, is Girl, Woman, Other. And this I really had to get adjusted to. It is very interesting to read. So I was listening to it at 1.5 times speed because generally I'm totally able to do that when it comes to audiobooks. And this time I just really couldn't. So I listened, I slowed it down to 1.25 times speed and that seems to be working a lot better for me because the narrator does read kind of fast. So in this book, we go by chapters. Each chapter, okay, yeah, you can see. I, I can follow along like this in my table of contents on my audio, on my audiobook, thankfully. But like chapter one is Ama, Yaz, and Dominique. Chapter two is Carol, Boomy, and Letitia. Chapter three, which I've just gotten to, is Shirley, Winsome, and Penelope. And they're connected. Like Ama is Yaz's mother and Dominique is a friend. And then Carol is Boomy's daughter and Letitia actually knows Ama. So it's like very all interconnected. But the best way I can describe this is just black woman stories in, I think it's all in Britain. It says it's a hopeful moving story of a group of black British women. I mean, things definitely happen in other places. And so it's kind of like this just... I don't want to say short story collection, but it feels that way because none of the stories are like start to finish fully cohesive telling a full narrative. It's just like a little glimpse into their life. And at first it was so hard to adjust to that. And then now I'm loving it, living for this idea of not having to know someone's entire story, but more so just like a little glimpse into their life and then the people in their lives and get that changing POV. So yeah, like I said, I'm starting, there are five chapters and I'm starting and I'm on Shirley, the first POV of chapter three. So almost halfway through, it's very hard to read. There's a lot of dense subject matter, um, very hard to read things that are like difficult content. Um, so if you're sensitive to certain things, look that up. And then there are just very interesting perspectives that obviously I would not have. One, not living across the sea and two, being white. So I really appreciate things and perspectives that I would not have otherwise. Um, and the one thing that I have to say is the prose, the writing style is effing phenomenal. Like instant Bernadine Evaristo fangirl based on this writing style alone. I'm absolutely blown away by it. Like so beyond impressed. It is like music to my ears. I can't even explain to you. And I, I don't know how, but it's so good. I've heard that it's interesting to read physically. So there's not a whole lot of dialogue in the book regardless, but I've heard there's like no quotations or you can just even tell from like this page alone that the formatting is very interesting and unique compared to a lot of books. So 
maybe I recommend the audiobook if you are finding that a little bit problematic for getting into it. But for me, it's just like perfect for audio. And I don't know. It's something that I feel like as a white female living in the United States is important for me to read and that I can definitely learn and gain something from. I didn't realize this won the Booker Prize in 2019. So those are the only collective thoughts I have as of halfway through. So this is what I finished reading. I think I started reading this in this reading vlog at the beginning. And this is what I am currently listening to. And as I sit here and do nothing after I left work, I believe this is what I'm going to pick up because my friend in Patreon just started reading this too. So thought I would join her and buddy read it. So Acts of Service by Lillian Fishman, the most, one of the most stunning covers of the year in my opinion. So we'll see how this goes. If you guys saw the clips, the MGK concert was a lot of fun. Um, we had so many things, the wedding, driving range, concert, dinner, barbecue here Monday. It was a lot going on and four hours of sleep for four days in a row. Doesn't do it for me. Just not... <laughs> not enough to function on so I need to try to catch up I have so many things my sponsored video didn't get approved in time because of the holiday so that made my video go up late which was very frustrating for me and so I just feel kind of behind in some ways but it'll all get done I work Friday and then this weekend have a birthday party celebration and possibly a night out we'll see but I'm gonna rest I'll check in later, I suppose. Okay, friends, I really don't have time this morning. I'm running very, very, very late for work today, but I wanted to tell you guys really quickly that I did finish a book this morning um, via audiobook, and it was absolutely fabulous, and that is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. I don't think any of us are surprised to hear that this was good um, because this book has so much praise already, so it doesn't need my reinforcement, but I'm very happy to report that I thought it was brilliant, that I thought it was wonderful, and I feel like it's something I will reread well worth the page count because it is quite a chunky book, but I'll give more like in-depth detailed thoughts, I suppose, later on after work today. Round of beer. <laughs> and tell you a little bit more about it, but I can immediately tell you that if Bernadine Evaristo's other books are at all similar to this in theme and writing style, she will be an absolute favorite author of all time for me. So I have to go into the library here later. I was actually thinking about having Paul help me choose. Sorry, this vlog clips all over the place. Um, I, was ha I was thinking about having Paul help me choose which book I read next off my TBR. I think Ronnie wants to, or how about you, Alfax? <laughs> um, but yeah, wow, this book is just, it was stunning, super shocking. Like I was very, very surprised by how much I loved it. No one wants to see me when there's this girl. Right, Ronnie? 
yeah, anyways, talking about Girl, Woman, Other, I just really did not anticipate loving it as much as I did. Are you being an angel, baby? So, TBR shelves, what will it be next? Because I need an audiobook, so I'm going to have to see what I have access to on audio, I suppose. Okay guys, it's time to close out this vlog, update you guys on what books I have finished this past week. I feel like I've gotten a lot of reading done, but I feel like I've not gotten a lot of reading done. I don't know. I already talked about finishing The Stardust Thief, so we don't need to review that here, but still happy to say it left a good taste in my mouth about that type of fantasy. In other disappointing news, um, and I know that some of you guys will be very sad and I know that some of you guys will be like, yes, sister, support yourself. That is, I have DNF'd for now, Mad Ship by Robin Hobb because I can't be bothered. And do you know what? Life is so freaking hard, man. Like life is so hard. And so to read a book that bores me to tears, like there's just no need for that nonsense. I have such pacing issues with Robin Hobb that I, I basically can't even describe it. Um, she takes the most simple scenes and draws them out for pages and pages and chapters. I'm just even talking about the amputation scene with Wintrow, like cut it off, man, just cut it off. I'll do it for you. I will do it for you at this point. Um, and it is not a fault of the book at all. It is nothing wrong with Robin Hobb. It is simply not a book that I gel with, that I mesh with. And so I have decided, as I sat there and pondered the time that it would take me to read this 900 page book and then another 900 page book on top of it, I thought I love myself too much for that and I require too much escapism in my life to trudge through something that is truly making me unhappy. So there is going to be no more Robin Hobb. That was it, that was the final straw. Um, I can't do it. I can't read a 900 page book that I'm bored for half of it. Uh, I don't care how much the payoff is. It's just, it does, I don't care enough to keep going. So I'm not going to, and you know what? I was talking to my friend today and I feel such a sense of relief about deciding not to continue on with that series because I sat there and I thought about what else I could be reading, what other sci-fi and fantasy books I could read in the time it would take me to get through Mad Ship. And I liked that way better. So, um, I guess I don't really have too much more to say about Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. This is the kind of ish I want to be filling my time with. This is what I want to be sitting with, spending my thoughts, thinking about. Um, so really, as I said before, it's just these interconnected characters. We have Ama, Yaz, Dominique, Carol, Boomy, Letitia, Shirley, Winsome, Penelope, Megan, Sash Morgan, Hattie, Grace. And then we get chapter five, which is the after party where some things all sort of interconnect. I thought it was lovely. I thought the subtle ties between all of the crew was so well done in a way that was not making it just this cast of interconnected stories, but more so like separate stories with minor connections to show how different people throughout can be connected in little ways. Um, I really don't know how else to describe this. All the blurbs on the back are perfectly well earned. It is wonderful writing. It is thought provoking. It is beautiful. It is important. It's relevant. It is every good descriptive word I could give it. And even though it's huge, I mean, it's like 450 pages, it flies by. And I think that I would like to physically reread this one day, but I do have to say the audiobook was wonderful and the narrator did a phenomenal job. So like, I will be very shocked if this is not my favorite book of July. So it's kind of hard to start the month out on something that you predict to be your favorite, but it just really was that good. And there's no 
denying that. So that is the other book that I finished. So I suppose um, I'll talk about the next physical book, which you guys will have seen that I began reading, and that's Act, Acts of Service by Lillian Fishman. Beautiful, beautiful cover. Um, and I hated this. I literally hated it. I sped read it so fast by the end because I just wanted it to be done. There was a couple things that stood out to me. I think I already read a little brief synopsis. There's way too much explicit sex scenes in this for me. I just, that's not some, like I get bored. I, I don't care to read about other people having sex. It's just not something I find entertaining. I always feel like I need to justify that in real life, but like saying I like sex, but like, I just don't care to read about it. I would read about so many other things. So this was boring for those parts. And also I hated Eve, the main character. I can't even describe, I hated her so much. I thought she was terrible, awful. And I didn't relate to her at all. And I can love books where I don't relate to the main character's way of thinking, but this just didn't work for me in the plot in the storytelling format, in the characterization, in the themes. I think like if I was somebody that had these thoughts about monogamy and power dynamics and sex and relationships and bisexuality, things like that, like maybe I would have enjoyed it more if I could relate to any of those things, but I literally related to basically nothing in this book. The characters, not one of them thinks the way that I do. So like I can appreciate reading about other perspectives and I can certainly appreciate other perspectives and I can appreciate the way other people choose to live their lives but it just doesn't make for a compelling or enjoyable read for me because of those things that I said it was just overall pretty boring the ending <laughs> um, most of us in my patreon that have read this did not enjoy it some of us enjoyed it more than others me being on the less end but a lot of us thought the ending was pretty trash too because you just get no conclusion, no answers, no ending. And I am usually, like 99% of the time, I'm okay with open endings. But when they're bad, they really don't work for me. And this is a case of one being bad. So I don't know, like I said, I just, I cannot relate at all to cheating, lying, um, these power dynamics that seem non-consensual at times. It's just, it's a lot for my brain to comprehend and I do not have any judgment whatsoever towards these people or people who live this way. Not at all. Do whatever you please. I just don't care to read about it, I guess. I don't know. So I should have known. Um, I really don't recommend this unless you can possibly relate to that. Like basically this girl, the whole idea is like she thinks she was made to be a sexual being. She was just, her purpose in life is to be used for sex, kind of. And she is in a relationship with this woman who who is a pediatric doctor, I think something like that. And she seems to be pretty great. And this Eve, the girlfriend, um, well, no, the main character, she starts posting these pictures online naked. And this girl, Olivia, contacts her and says she wants to meet up. And they start this relationship with Olivia and Nathan. Nathan is unexpected because our main character is a lesbian and does not want to interact with men at all. But needless to say, they continue on with it behind the girlfriend's back. And there's also, I don't know, there's just a lot, a lot to it. I will say the plot aspect did pick up near the last quarter, I would say. That's when the plot became interesting to me, but I got no resolution from it. None at all, none whatsoever. It took nothing away from the end of it. So um, I don't know. I don't think the themes were nuanced enough in the discussion and well explored enough for me to say that I could recommend this. But I kind of sort of like these covers together. I think the bright neons go well. So then what did I decide to pick up after that? I suppose I'll talk about it since this vlog is kind of short and I'm only 8% of the way through, but I decided to pick up Bewilderment by Richard Powers um, via audio because I had access to it um, from my library. And this is my first book by Richard Powers. I really want to read the overstory just because I think the idea of that and the themes will really resonate with me. This is a pretty short book. It's under 300 pages. And so far, we're just learning about this dad and the son. Um, I think his name is Robbie or Robin. And they're out to watch this... Um, Oh my God, Comet or something along those lines. So they're out in the wilderness and we're learning about how his mother has died and we just know that she was crushed 
And it sounds like he has attention, de uh, attention deficit disorder. The dad is really struggling with like treatment of how they would like to, how they treat his son and just things that have happened there. So, so far, I really like the POV from the dad and the son. I'm really intrigued to see like the dynamics, where the plot goes, what happened with the mother and everything. So as I said, I'm 8% in. So barely, barely getting started, if you can even see my bookmark. Um, but I think the writing is really, really nice so far. So I'm anxious to continue on with that one. And then, I mean, I'm free to choose any physical book off my shelf that I please. It's funny because on the way home from work this afternoon, I was in my Jeep and I was just like, I told my coworker, I was like, tell me not to go to the bookstore. Tell me not to go to the bookstore because I just wanted to jet to the bookstore, which is nonsense. I have two full shelves of books to read that I own and I do not need to purchase any book, but I have been so good about reading books off my shelf, even audiobooks I've been listening to. I've really not purchased anything and I'm proud of that and I want to keep it that way for my peace of mind only but sometimes you just get that urge to go to the bookstore and buy something so i have bought it and i don't know i guess you guys could come with me to pick something i would love also if you would give me some feedback in this video about perhaps what kind of min year check-in videos you'd like from me i'm doing my favorite books of the year so far and i was planning to do like a mid-year statistics overall wrap up but part of me wants to talk about my least favorite books of the year, the worst books of the year that I've read, because I honestly have a ton of books this year that I hated compared to normal. And I also wanted to know if you guys want to see like my quarter two DNFs, um, maybe combined with my quarter two statistics, because I feel like at that mid-year check-in, a lot of people don't care about second quarter statistics, but I'm somebody who usually does statistics video. So I'm curious to know what you guys think about that, what you would like there. I'm thinking that my next fantasy read will be The Blood Trials. I think that's what it's called. Um, and then The Girl and the Moon. No. Yes. I think that's it. The newer Mark Lawrence. So I guess we'll see where things go, but that's kind of my plan for now. Let's go look for a book off my shelf. Okay, so I did put quite a few holds in from the library for audiobook editions of some books today. Um, some of those being Supper Club, Bewilderment, obviously, Ghosts, Beautiful Country, Severance, Things We Lost to the Water, um, those might be most of them. So I'm not going to physically read any of those. I think I'm still going to wait on the Aquakia Mezzi and I'm not ready to read another Franzen yet. So I need to sit here and analyze like what I'm in the mood to physically read. So let me turn you around. Part of me is considering I love you, but I've chosen darkness, but I also do have an audiobook hold for that. So I kind of want to choose something that I don't have an audiobook hold for. I'm not going to choose any of the sci-fi and fantasy. I have audiobook holds on every single one of these, and I'm not going to choose graphic novels or manga. So that pretty much eliminates the entire bottom shelf. So we, oh, I also have a hold on matrix for the audiobook. So we are looking at this middle shelf here. Now these, I cannot find audiobooks for any of those chunkers that I really want to read. Um, I am considering, I guess let's eliminate some more. I need to read the seasonal quartet before I get to this. Joan Didion, I am saving for before I go to LA because she writes about LA and um, that I have audio for. So these are options. Um, this one I know deals with suicide, I think. So I really want to read this. This I was supposed to read a while back and never read. Um, that I would love to find the audiobook and I can't. Well, I did put audiobook holds on the Pisces and the Remains of the Day. So I guess I won't pick those. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. It's Eve Babbitt's that I'm waiting to read for LA. But Joan Didion might also write about LA. Now I'm confused myself. I do have a couple short story collections I could read. I don't think I'm in the mood for another toxic relationship. Um, very Cold People sounds intriguing. I do not want a sci-fi. Maybe Breasts and Eggs or Outline. Let me, let me read through a couple of these real quick.
Uh, you guys, I really don't know. I am not loving the intro to any of these, so I might give it a rest and wait until the morning to decide. But I have a feeling it's going to be breasts and eggs that I go with. I suppose we'll have to see, and you'll have to tune in next week to find out. But if you have made it this far to the end of the reading vlog, hmm, give me a pink emoji, your very favorite one for acts of service since I love that cover so much. So the hearts, any of the pink hearts, the bow, a pig, whatever you want, give me a pink emoji. I hope that you guys are having a great Friday, a great start to your weekend. Let me know if you're doing something fun this weekend, what you're getting up to and what you will be reading. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.